when you have to have state of emergency, by the time you reach home, there's somebody dead. So the state of emergency can work now. This is another My View TV exclusive. Please remember to hit the notification bell, like, share and subscribe. I don't bring nobody forward in your future for me. Everything what you see up my natural talent. Let me tell you something. You see, when you know what to please the audience with, it's simple, me. What go on, my people? Hope everybody in okay. Hope everybody in all right. When me tell you that the state of emergency don't no make no sense, don't think I joke me, I make. Coup and criminal pan bus a pass day in, day out with them machine pan them. And the police now stop them. If you don't feel like a lie, me, I tell. When you don't reach a checkpoint, take out on the phone and video and see if them are going to stop you. Them now stop nobody. Only thing they worry about is our time and lunch time. And when the little girl and when the little peanut brain are past, my whole land, my soul tackle the state of emergency. I can start the news out of Santa Mosca. I tell you, no. before I run down the breaking news, I wait until I get the details and tell you. No. So you need a sorry for the boy then girlfriend that gets slapped out of Saint Thomas. But I always come and tell you, you know. And the people in the life are going to downfall. Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on. A man who the police said was a person of interest in a murder was shot dead along with his girlfriend on Tuesday morning in the community of Top Hill in St. Thomas. Well, and the people, what me just say, a person of interest in a murder. So that means him deserve to get slapped with them. And who are all I'm supposed to get slapped with too? Long time me I tell you no. Watch the people them round you know. Anyway, the guy continue. The deceased has been identified as 22 year old Armando Grant and 23 year old Julian Grant. Yes, people. Him and the woman have his same last name. Them not married. Them see him girlfriend. You understand? I wonder if a family ram. Oh, never hear me say that. The guy continue. According to the police, at about 2.30, the couple was asleep at Mr. Grant's house when a door was kicked in. Our men entered and shot the victim several times. Mr. Grant was on the police radar in relation to a murder committed in Bump District in St. Thomas on October 24th. The guy tell you something. The police, them never had a look for nobody. Because at the same look, we saw Albert Dunga was him living on the paper. The police them never look for nobody and them friend. Anyway, the guy continue. The police has said several persons wanted for various crimes have been detained since the state of a public emergency was imposed in several police divisions on Sunday. I know them that come come say this foolish is no people. But wait a bit. See the superintendent, guess who? Oh, guess who, oh, people? Our favorite mistake. She have a lot to say. A little later today when I speak to the secretariat, I'll have a probably a tally of um, what where we are so far because they are tracking, you know, our suffrage rates and the heat rates and so on. So I'll be in a better position in terms of numbers, even without the sheer number the numbers so so for statistical purposes, just being out there in the community and getting the feedback from the citizens on the ground, I think when you go in and you talk to persons, because sometimes when you listen, you hear persons who are not connected to the, to the violence on a day-to-day -day basis speak, you get the impression that the people who live it every day don't want it. But when you really go out and get the appreciation from the citizens who have to live the violence every day, you just feel like you're, you're really doing something to impact those lives. There are things to revise the tactics and some of the operational procedures that will be done support of the um, state of emergency activities. So we expect to see improvement in those areas in terms of uh, re reduction in delays as a result of um, operations that have been done um, on the road. Since nobody now got tell you, I can tell you this. The bag of checkpoint, checkpoint business don't have no make no sense. You understand? Police supposed to walk from house to house and I keep them all up the doors and I look for criminal and I dig up yard. What you mean when I put them in a checkpoint just to sit down in the sun? And then you hear this idiot now. Yes, listen this idiot here. Come on and talk about police forget get two hour break. Two hour break for do the what? Them sit down the whole day not doing nothing. What kind of two hour break they want? The basic amenities such as water to replenish the body uh, after being dehydrated the long extended hours that they will have to stay on the checkpoints. The abolition house uh, was not in place for the members to relieve themselves and at this time the complaints from the membership is the long hours of work without any break so to speak. They have not been able to get even a two hours break. 
though we have lost a number of members to include those from the district constables, uh, you, rural police force, the government, our employer, has not even acknowledged the sacrifice that we have made. We are hoping that the government will take the issue of remuneration and the compensation issue very seriously because we are not going to relent on this one. And the country can rest assured that we are not prepared to pull our services from the citizens of this country and allow hoodlums and criminal elements to reign. We have made the sacrifice in the past and will continue to make the sacrifice. With me, I call a spade a spade. I mean, the credit where credit is due. You understand? This may be the first and this probably be the last time when I hear me say, me agree with the clown. Yes, people. Mark Golden, may I talk? When him say, it does not work and it will not work. Jamaica deserves better. We do not need state of emergency. I agree with that. Police supposed to dip on the ground, walk in. And if they want to run them run to and look for criminal, no sit down on a tent and sleep and catch up and wait for food or stop when them have bad home break. No, 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 no. And everything I agree with the clown saying, never make the clown finish and then in care of Lieutenant Car. Him no no sense when my retire about divine intervention. No matter about something different. And to take away the rights of our people to make Jamaica safe. We do not need state of emergency to have police and soldiers on the ground in our communities. There can be curfews, there can be cordon and search without states of emergency. These tools exist under ordinary legislation and it is a dangerous falsehood, fake news spread by this government to suggest that having security on the ground means you have to have state of emergency. Not no go so. We need a state of emergency to address the social conditions in these communities that are generating a third, notwithstanding that they represent only 1% of the geographic of area of Jamaica, but they're generating a third of the violent crime. We need a state of emergency in terms of social investment in those communities. Somebody need to tell Peter Dunsing to sit on one side and shut him out. Since you no one tell him, maybe tell him for you. Dumpting, shut your mouth. Because you don't have no sense. Anyway, now, people, I can move on. Because you know, the thing on the news, we're not out tarry. But this is foolish. Sir. Hold on now. Clangs, man, child. During the course of the witness's testimony on Tuesday, several surprising and unexpected evidence was given. The witness spoke of how a defendant on trial walked around for days with the head of a man in a bucket. The man, he said, was killed, his head severed and buried by members of the gang. According to the witness, the man who was allegedly killed in Otaria St. Anne was a member of the Tesha Miller faction of the gang. He admitted that he did not share this piece of information with the police. During further cross-examination, the witness revealed that he bleached his skin and grew his hair to disguise himself from the alleged gangsters. The defense accused the witness of blatantly lying about the murder of a man identified as outlaw. Discrepancies were found with the date of the murder on the indictment, which read November 2017 versus January 2018, the date the witness gave in his Statement. Another attorney accused the witness of being deceitful, deceptive, and dangerous, claiming that the witness only decided to cooperate with the police because his cell phone, license, and ID were found in a rental car where another gang member was allegedly shot and killed by the police. But the witness rubbished the suggestion, and it was later disclosed that his personal items were planted as a ploy for the gang to believe that he was a person of interest by the police. Meanwhile, Chief Justice Brian Sykes raised concerns as it relates to the progress of the trial. He noted that with 25 counts on the indictment, 42 proposed witnesses, roughly 300 pages of transcripts, and other supporting documents, going forward there needs to be order and structure. He requested from the prosecution a written map navigating which witnesses are connected to each counts and what they will be talking about.